Awesome, great. All right, all right. So let's start off by sitting up nice and straight in our seat. We want to begin to just notice the way our body is connecting to the earth, to the ground, to the seat beneath us. Start to sit up a little bit taller, elongating the chest, elongating the rib cage so that it kind of comes up towards the heart. And then roll the shoulders back away from the ears. And while you're here, just take a breath. Ha. Inhale and breathe in. And on the exhale, release and just let go. Maybe even take your hands, place them on your belly and start to just take in a few concentrated breaths. If you like, I invite you to close your eyes. Do your best to just feel the rise and fall of the belly. Notice the way that feels with the breath. Notice the way the body feels. And take notice of anything that you're feeling emotionally right now too. And see if you can just exhale to soften it. Trying to clear your mind, preparing yourself to be here for the next hour of class, completely aware and present. We'll say about four more breath cycles. As we're feeling our body here, try to just notice your lower body and, and put your legs and hips width apart position. You have um, your legs and your thighs square with your hips. You can take your two fists, press them together, hug the inner arches of your knees around your fists. And when you look down, you want to make sure that you see a capital H, okay? If you have a foot that's kind of to the left or to the right, bring it in so that it's parallel. And this is really important for our base position in our practice. We're going to keep coming back to this. Okay. Well, now take your breath and you can actually bring your hands to the tops of your thighs, or you can drop them by your side, your choice. And just imagine that your breath can come down to the full length of your body. So feel that your whole body is going to be connected in this practice. Even if you're maybe using your upper body, the lower portion of your body is also important. So you always wanna keep this balance in mind. So allow for your breath to connect to each part of the body for each inhale, the best that you can. And on the exhale, letting go and taking with it anything that would block you or that's taking your mind or your attention away. And if you do happen to feel any kinds of pains or sensations, monitor that. You can breathe into the sensations if it's something that you're familiar with. But if anything is beyond a moderate type of sensation that you're unfamiliar with, or you feel pain in any way that you're uncomfortable with, just don't do the pose, okay? Tomorrow's another day. Maybe you're just not ready today. And that doesn't mean anything. It's okay to is actually a really great thing to make these decisions for your body and your mind on your own. So that's something to applaud yourself for anytime you feel like you have to move away from something that I might be teaching, okay? That's a good thing for you. And I say that because I can't see you, right? I can't see everybody. So you're gonna have to make some of these decisions on your own. So Let's get that structure right and have a good base and just keep that monitoring in mind and that breath in mind. All right. Let's begin by taking our shoulders, rolling them up to our ears. Inhale and breathe in. And then on the exhale, drop those shoulders down. Yep. Feel as you drop down that your spine is connected to that drop down. Inhale, breathe in, squeeze the core, lift up on those shoulders. And then in the exhale, just drop them down once again. Start to get a little bit bigger in your shoulder roll as you start to push your shoulders back. That spine area now starts to squeeze in just a little bit. And then inhale again and exhale, roll back. And then reverse. 
starting to just feel this connection, lifting up the shoulders towards the ears, and then on the exhale, lowering down, connecting breath to body, body to breath. And then you start to come inwards, caving in that chest a little bit more and then pulling back, inhale and breathing in and then pulling back. Beautiful, beautiful. Arms come up and they're gonna come up to shoulders lane, sky flip the palms so that they're facing the ceiling. Inhale and breathe in, roll those shoulders up again. On the exhale, lower them down. Bicep to tricep, tricep to bicep. Try that four times. Coming forward and then reverse back four times. Good job, good job. Your arms are gonna get just a little heavy and that's okay. We're gonna use that resistance and bring the arms up overhead. Roll the shoulders away from the ears. Arms look up, gaze up, stretch up. If you like to back bend slightly, you can. This is our seated mountain pose. Breathing in, imagine that that breath reaches the, the tip peak of the mountain. And exhale, roll those shoulders by the ears, away from the ears. Keep the biceps by the ears. So shoulders away from the ears, biceps by the ears. Arms are gonna get heavy and we're gonna slowly start to roll them down, but don't go fast. I know you want to, but just start to lower them down and you're gonna come all the way down by the sides and just let the blood rush down, matching breath to movement. And then I'll just sit here for a second and monitor the way your shoulders feel, become more aware of how your fingertips feel noticing what parts of your body you may need to send more breath to, right? This shoulder area can be tense, especially if you slept a certain way, right? So give yourself that permission to just be more aware of it. Arms rise, inhale, breathe in, maybe to the count of three or four. This time, once you roll those shoulders back away from the ears, press the palms up towards the ceiling, Keep that same um, type of motion in mind, keeping those shoulders away from the ears. Inhale, look up, gaze up, feel the stretch of the wrist. Breathe in and breathe out and then lean to your right, pulling away from that rib cage on the left side and then tilt, tilt that left side back and gaze is up. Beautiful. Coming back to center. Lean over towards the left and do that same thing, but this time right side is gonna feel that stretch, pivot up, gazes up to the right. Coming back into center, take those arms, coming down again, four, three, two, one. Blood rushes down into the fingertips. Take our fingers, interlace those fingers, press the shoulders away from the ears, interlock them. And if you like to start to come forward, you can. If you don't want to come forward and you just want to kind of grab your clothes or hold on to the bottom of your spine, you can do that as well. And just stay here for a second. The goal is to hold it so you start to build a little heat. So once you get that heat, that's what's going to allow you to go a little bit further. That's what starts to soften the muscle. Yeah, all right. At first, it could be tense. So breathe into it and do not overdo it. Just breathe into it. You'll get there. And then unlock those fingers. Bring those arms by the side. And you know, one of my favorite things to do is just um, spin back and forth, open it up, start to unlock the lower back, take those arms from all that work that you just did and just kind of swing them. All right, great job, beautiful. And you can place your hands back on your thighs and just take a moment to pause and breathe. On your next inhale, sit up a little bit taller in your seat. Take the chin, drop it down to the chest. Inhale and exhale. Nothing you have to do and nowhere you have to go. I'm gonna take your right ear and bring it over towards your right shoulder. And just stay there. You don't have to do anything elaborate. Just breathe in. And allow the breath to massage the neck. And you're going to continue to keep that body square and straight with the front of the room. It's just the neck that curves to the right. All right, we're going to bring our chin back down to the center chest and just keep it there as well. We're going to hold it for a few moments. Once again, breathing in through the sensation. Mm 
All right. All right. Right left ear to the left shoulder. Chin back to the chest. Take two hands, place them on top of the back of the head and just let the hands sit there. Bring the hands back onto the tops of the thighs. Again, now right ear to the right shoulder. Right hand rises and it releases and it gently with the fingertips, lays the fingertips on the left side of the head. And you're just getting a little kind of tug that comes from gravity. You're not adding any force to it. It just gives you that extra stretch on the left, um, on the left side. If there's anything you can let go of, let go of here. Try to use that breath to just exhale it out. If there's anything that you can do with the breath to invite that new energy in, go ahead and do it. Focus on gratitude maybe of that breath. And exhale and release, making space for that gratitude or breath to grow. Take that right hand, bring it back onto the right thigh. Take the chin back into the center chest. Hands come back up, top of the head. We're gonna do this little pause in between going to the left side. Again, let those breaths be concentrated and let them have meaning. Breathing in and breathing out we go. Hands come down by the side or into the tops of the thigh. Left ear comes over towards the left shoulder. Left hand rises and it lays down as it's released to the right side of the head. Again, we're breathing through it. It's not just about the pose, it's about the breath. And yoga is not just about poses from one to the next. It's about decisions that we make while we're in the pose, the honor that we give our body throughout the practice, acknowledging that renewing breath and using that breath to also release us from things that could be just taking up space. I'm gonna take that hand, that left hand, bring it back down, laying it on the thigh, chin back to the center chest. Again, last time, just to lock it up, hands come to the top of the head. We should feel like be able to feel a little bit more decompression in the back of that neck body. Let's continue to make sure that the body is sitting up tall from spine, the lower spine, all the way to the nape of that neck. Hands come down onto the tops of the thighs, which is going to actually be our next placement for our next pose, which is cat cow. We're gonna start out our cat cow though, with our chin to our chest, and we're gonna take our back and we're just gonna dome shape it out. Like we're moving our back towards the wall behind us, tuck in that belly and then lift up Lumming out like a flower comes out of the ground, up towards the sun, gaze goes up, heart goes up, chest comes up. And just see what that feels like. You don't have to go and um, over exaggerate the, the movement of the back bending, okay? Just do what you can do. Come back in this time, and this time I want you to incorporate the breath the best way that you feel like it's going to be for you. And then reverse. Belly goes up, chest goes up. Back we go. 
and forward. All right, I invite you to do about another five of these, but I want you to just hold them for as long as you feel like you want to hold them for. All right, and empower yourself to make those movements based on what your body is really um, like needing right now. So you just want to have a sense of what your body needs. Nothing more, nothing less. Maybe even close your eyes so you're not even really looking at me unless you need me for the demo. Just I want you to start to get into the habit of trusting yourself. And think about each movement as this sense of trust, acknowledging that trust in your body and your breath. Okay. It's about three more or two more, depending where you're at. And if you've completed, come back to center. And we'll meet back into our base position. Beautiful. And then bring your body back up completely straight. Eyesight gaze in front of you. And we're going to take our hands, lift them up high overhead. All right, look up, gaze up, and let's go in for our first flow of the class just to open up the whole body. Now that our shoulders are loose and our chin is loose, this will help us get a little bit more elongation throughout that process. Belly comes down towards the thighs. So lay the belly down on the thighs, droop the hands over the legs, chin to the chest. And just take a few breaths here to breathe. You don't have to rush through this part at this point. It's not one breath, one movement. It's just the first seated forward fold of the class. Press your feet into the ground, squeeze the core, come up, half lift, flat back. Yeah, we're gonna hold this for a few moments. Now you're gonna feel your belly get strong. Notice how the abs are engaged, the lower back is engaged. Exhale, come back down after doing that work, resting the belly and the chest on the thighs, chin back to the chest, and then shake the head, maybe yes and no. Beautiful, slowly start to lift up, rise up, coming up, using that ab strength up into a mountain pose, hands overhead high, Roll those shoulders back away from the ears. Today, we're gonna add a little new component just because I feel fancy. You can do this as well. Lift up your foot. If you need to put your toe on the ground, you can, but if you can kick it up a little bit and just kick it out in front of you, go for that. If you can, that's okay. Just keep that toe on the ground. And now bring that foot back down. Keep those hands up overhead. Let's go to the other side and bring up that foot if you can, or bring the toes. Squeezing the core, using those muscles, bring the foot back down and then bring those hands down by the side. Okay, that's just to get you a chance to feel it. Just like in a sun salutation, we would be bringing the foot forward. We'd be engaging the lot bottom portion. It's not always just about the flow. We wanna engage that lower part of our body too. All right, so let's lift up again. Arms rise, exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift, flat back. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, arms rise. Roll those shoulders back away from the ears. Inhale, breathe in, lift up on that um, right foot. However you wanna do it, you just do your best. Remember there's modifications and then bring the foot down. Before going into the other side this time, we're gonna go through another flow and then do the other side. All right, so arms lift up, exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift, flat back. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, arms rise. Hands come up overhead high, mountain pose. Keep those hands in mountain pose. Lift up now on the left foot. Again, your choice. Squeeze that core, breathe in, breathe out, and then exhale. Bring that foot back down. Awesome. Gaze is up, and then bring the hands down by the sides. Beautiful job, and let's shake it out. Left to right. I love it, love it. You guys are doing great. All right, let's go ahead and start to do some twisting to the left and the right so that we can start to just open up our lower spine. It's really important we keep that um, nimble so that we're able to move as we need to move and it keeps us flexible and it keeps us um, from getting injury, okay? So arms are gonna lift up and we're gonna pivot over towards the right. Looking towards the right side, come back to center, squeezing that core, looking up, we're still in mountain pose. And on the exhale, we're taking our gaze and we're looking to the other side of the mountain. Now to the left, 
Inhale back to center, back to the peak of the mountain, and then exhale to the right, and then drop the hands down to the outside of the right leg. And I'll do this so you can see me. All right, that's what it looks like. If you want to take your right hand and place it on the chair, you can, or you can just bring your hand to the top of the chair or just have a dangle. Okay, so your choice. And try to take your gaze, your chin, and just look over your right shoulder. Do your best to focus more on the breath, opening up the spine. You also can be fluid in how you place that hand. The way you start is not the way you have to end, okay? If your legs kind of fall apart from one another, that's okay too. It's more about that twist and you taking that gaze over that shoulder. More about the breath and the twist. Less about the legs, even though they're part of the pose, part of the practice. You don't have to do anything here, but just be yourself and let it go. Breath in and breath out. And if that helps you twist a little bit more, great. You can continue to lift up through the rib cage into the heart. Maybe think about your heart being vibrant and bright. You want people to see that light. Right, we don't, we don't light a light and put it under a table. What we do is we bring that light out and we let it shine. So let your light shine. And this is that chest opener that does that. We're just starting on one side and then we'll go to the next. Two more breaths. Slowly bring those hands up. You're going to come back into that mountain pose to the right side. You're looking over the right side of the mountain. Pivot back to center using that core. Look up, gazing up. And then we're going to pivot over towards the left. So let me go ahead and move my chair. Pivoting over towards the left we go. Pivot back to center to the right. And then come back to center and pivot to the left again. Just opening up that spine and then dropping those hands to the outside of the left leg and I will move this so that you can see me on the left side find a home for your hand right so wherever you feel like you want to place that hand you can my goal is to take that chin and try to run it over that chest that um that shoulder okay remember chest is vibrant and bright imagine that your heart and your chest is your light and that light is shining so you want to keep your belly up you want to keep that position up. So nice, straight back, good alignment, but you're just taking that twist. You're using your breath to help you ease into it. And each time that you feel like you can go a little bit further, you're going to look over your left shoulder more. The gaze is yours. Breathe in and breathe out. Two more breaths. Bring those hands up overhead and looking to the left side of that mountain, pivot back into center. All right, look up, gaze up. And then bring those hands down by your side. All right, we're gonna take our hands behind us. And I just want you to take your arms and see if you can reach for the opposite elbows behind your back body. See if you can get those elbows and just hold the pose there. Okay, see what that looks like, see what that feels like. Now, once you're here, you can stay here or you can try to come into your palms pressed into that prayer position into your back. 
Okay, so behind you, if you can, bring those fingertips together, bring the palms somewhere close. And if you wanna do this, but you don't wanna hold on to the shoulders anymore, or it's really hard for you, you can always just grab your clothes in the back, okay? Maybe something like that. So there's those modifications for you. But the goal is to try to take those hands and bring them together. Let that chest shine bright. And that should give you an idea of your chest. Notice what that feels like right now. Notice how it's unrestricted. Take a few breaths. And breathe. All right. <coughs> Drop the hands by the sides. One second. Keep the hands by the sides. I'm gonna move my chair back to where it was. Breathe in and breathe out, beautiful. And then shake it out, left to right. Yeah, just there we go. All right, let's go through a flow. Arms rise, reach up, lift up overhead. Now your mountain top, remember up high, look up, gaze up. Exhale, forward fold, belly is strong. Inhale, half lift, flat back. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, arms rise. Coming up, we're gonna keep those arms there, roll those shoulders back away from the ears, and you're gonna do your version of taking that foot and bringing it forward. Either whether it's the toe or you're kicking it forward and the knee is soft, squeeze that core and then bring it back. Inhale, gaze is up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift, flat back. Exhale. Forward fold, inhale, arms is up, rising up high, staying there in mountain pose. On your next inhale, lift up that foot, squeeze the core, and then exhale, bring the foot back down. And then bring those hands back down by the side and shake it out. Okay, great. Take the feet, toe heel them together. All right, one strong leg. The way we try to keep this leg together, otherwise it tries to, I don't know if there's like a magnet and opposite poles in the knees, I can't quite tell you, but I do know that if you press your feet into the ground more and you squeeze your core, that you're able to keep those legs together better. If you try to think about keeping the knees together, for whatever reason, they fall apart or the thighs go the opposite way. So try to focus more on feet and belly, okay? Arms rise, reach up, lift up overhead. Take those palms, those hands together, palm press them, look up, gaze up. Keep the biceps by the ears and the triceps by the ears and look up. And we're gonna take our bodies and we're gonna lean over towards the right. Coming back to center, lean towards the left. Come back to center. And then bring the hands down, heart center, palms are still pressed. And just in this moment, set an intention for this class if you have not done so already. And breathe in and breathe out as you take this moment of reflection and just offer yourself whatever it is that you need. Breathe and let go. Do yourself to do your best to remain present as you do this and take it seriously. It's your own time. It's your own intention. We're going to take our left elbow, wiggle it, and we're going to come down the center like we're twisting over to the right, but our elbow is down the front and center. We're looking over towards our right. And just pause for a second and breathe. Come back to center. Take that right elbow. You can wiggle it and come right down the center and look over towards the left. Come back to center. And then we're gonna come back over again towards the right. And this time you're gonna find a home for your left elbow. You can bring it down on the left leg. You can bring it down on the right, or you can hook it over. Just don't bring it in between your thighs because you're gonna push your legs open, okay? But I recommend wherever you are, just like an airplane, come down and start there. 
That way you are already twisted there. It's not so hard for you to come down into a place that you're naturally able to hold yourself. And then if you wanna go for an additional stretch, you can try to inch that elbow over, squeeze the core, keep those feet pressed to the ground and gaze is up. Palms are pressed together, hands are connected. Feel that interconnectedness of your hands from fingertip to fingertip all the way up through the elbow, down the shoulders, through the spine, into your seat. Both your sits bones should be grounded into that seat. You shouldn't be leaning to the left or the right. And then all the way down into your feet, you can continue to just squeeze that um, soles of those feet down into the floor. And you can feel a way that helps you to strengthen the body. Inhale, come up, keep that gaze over towards the right airplane rises. Squeeze the core, come back to center. Now we're gonna come over to the left. Hold ourselves here. Right elbow is down front and center. When you feel like you're in your most natural state, bring that elbow down into landing. And then take that gaze up onto the left side. So you're looking up to the left. You have a home for that elbow. And if you wanna try to go beyond that natural place where your body is aligned, you're welcome to go for it. And just like the other side, feel the interconnectedness of the hands to the fingertips, through the elbows, the shoulders, sits bones grounded, feet press into the ground. Core is active and engaged, but the breath is helping. The breath is just breathing into all the boundaries of the body. Just a gentle twist with the breath. Slowly come up. Uh, the airplane comes back up, so to speak. And then we're gonna come back to center. Beautiful. Toe heel those feet apart, back to hips width apart. Beautiful, beautiful. We're gonna take those hands, lift them up high overhead, undo the prayer position. Gaze is up and let's go through a flow on each side. So inhale, arms are eyes. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift, flat back. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, arms rise, reach up, lift up overhead. Take our um, right foot, come into that. Um, so it would be a so-called lunge position, but we're just kicking it forward straight and then bring the foot back down. All right, you can bring the hands back down by the side. Inhale, arms rise, reach up, lift up overhead. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift, flat back. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, arms rise. Taking your time as you get there. Then kick up on that next inhale. Though with that left foot, bring the left foot back, keeping it steady, squeezing the core. And then on the exhale, bring your hands back down by your side. So we're still engaging some of those same muscles as we would in a, sun, a full sun salutation, okay? With the lunges and all. That lower part of that belly, if you need to get more lift, you're just gonna squeeze that belly in, okay? Keep that belly engaged just as we go through each portion of the practice. Open up the legs, hands to the tops of the knees. We're gonna bring the chest forward and then pull back. Just like we did in like cat cow a little bit, but except we're exaggerating this time and we're coming forward and then we're pulling back. And forward we go and back we go. This time when we come forward, just come to a, um, a position where you're kind of lifted up. Take your right shoulder, wiggle the right shoulder and then just press down. Yep, so you're just pressing down with that shoulder, coming right down the center. Your fingertips on the right hand are just pressed into the inside of the right thigh. Come up, let's do it on the left side. So wiggle that left shoulder and drop it down. And breathe. This time the hand is pressing into the inside of the left thigh. Come back up and let's roll back and forth again. Engage the core, breathe in and breathe out. 
And then we come back to center. Beautiful. Keep the legs open because we're going to do a little bit more on our thighs that are their inner thighs and our legs. So we're gonna to start to bring our hands down so that our elbows come to the inside of our knees on both sides, the palms press together and breathe. So press the elbows into the knees and the knees into the elbows. This is the inside, like really like it's the inside of the thigh, but it's still like within that area. So you're gonna squeeze and hold that and then drop your hands down to your ankle. So you know your elbows are on the inside of your legs, hands are on your ankles. Head is still up, so you're still able to see me, okay? Core is up, you're like in a half lift kind of position. It's not very comfortable, but don't worry, we're not staying here. All right, what we're gonna do is we're gonna um, roll our weight over to the right side and then lift up on that left hand, one straight long line of energy. Trying our best to just keep our sits bone grounded into the seat and breathe. Then take that left hand, bring it back down, locking those fingertips around the ankles, shift that weight over towards the left side, right hand comes up, gaze is up. Hands come down, locking again. If you like, you can stay just like this, or if you want to go a step further you, and your chair permits it, you can bring your hands down into the floor and then shake your head yes and no. Gives your neck a good way to kind of decompress. And it also stretches out the inner thighs. Two more breaths. On the next breath, bring your hands, locking those fingertips around the ankles again, but this time walking those hands up one step at a time, one breath at a time, all the way up to the thighs. Beautiful. All right, roll those shoulders back away from the ears and then toe heel the feet back together. Beautiful. All right, we're gonna take our hands, we're gonna interlace our fingers, wrap them around the knee. If you wanna bring your toe onto the ground and just stay like this, you can. And what we're gonna start out by doing, and I'll go like this so you can see me, is our bellies are going to hunch forward just like they were in the cat cow. So this would be that scare cat pose where the back kind of protrudes out, but you're holding your fingertips around that right leg, okay? Then on the next inhale, you're gonna come into that position just like the cow part of the pose where the chest lifts up high. If you can bring the knee in towards the arm on the right side, that's great. And what I mean by that is you just kind of bring it up over into the inner arm rather than straight into the chest. And then you can lower back down. If that doesn't work for you, you can just simply keep the toe on the ground, keep the heel raised, and you can do the same kind of pose, squeezing in and out. Okay, so it's really a matter of what you want to do. All right, say about three more of these. You can hold it as long as you like, but I'm kind of doing one breath, one movement. And then resting that foot back on the ground. Good job. Let's scoop up, taking our hands out and then scooping up on the left leg. All right, toe to the ground. If that's how you want to stay, you can. Or you can lift up and hover and then come into that cat pose back protruding out belly hunched in and then inhale and breathe in and then come up into that cow pose and then back to the cat and the cow do that a few times you're loosening up that back you're loosening up your mid back and you're also loosening up your hips for the next set that we're about to do. And then place the foot down on the ground. Beautiful. Awesome. Let's go through our flow. Arms rise, reach up, lift up overhead. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift, flat back. Good job. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, arms rise reaching up overhead, squeeze that core and kick that foot forward or just do your toe, but you should start to feel this connection between your abs and bring that foot back and your feet when you go to lift them up. Hands come down by the side. Inhale, arms rise, reach up, lift up overhead. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift, flat back. Exhale, forward fold. 
Inhale, arms rise. Roll those shoulders back and then kick up on that left leg. Good job. Bring that foot back down to the ground and then take those hands and bring them back down by the sides and shake it out. Good job, good job. All right, let's take our hands, hold on to the chair, kick that right foot out. We've been doing that through our um, flow, so you kind of get the sense, or just bring it out. And you're gonna take the heel, place it on the ground. Soften the um, right knee, okay? We don't want any rigid knees, not yet anyway. We can keep that knee soft. Take your left foot and cross it on top of the right. All right, this is gonna be good to stretch our hamstrings. So we're gonna sit up nice and tall in our seat, legs stretched. If you wanna hold on to the chair, continue to hold on to the chair while you lean forward. Lean forward to where you feel most comfortable, okay? There's just don't over lean if you don't feel comfortable. And if you like to let go of your hands, you can. The front of your body is connected um, to the heels, but you just need your heels on that ground. Okay, so your heel should be on the ground. You can soften the ankles, but your toes should still be waving hello to you in some way. Chin to the chest. And this is just the pose we just sit in for a little bit. It's not um, a pose that we do a lot of moving like the flow. It's just allowing for the stretch to start to be something that works in its own time because the hamstrings and the lower back and the hips are so sensitive. We just wanna be gentle here. Allow each breath to come in, each breath to go out. Just let go a little more with each breath. Slowly start to rise up, belly, chest, and then head, taking your time, being easy, rolling those shoulders back away from the ears and just sitting here for a second before coming out of the pose. When you're ready, activate the belly and bring your left foot back and then your right and shake it out left to right before we go on to the other side. All right, hold on to the chair again, sit up nice and tall in your seat. Take that left foot forward, kick it forward, heel down onto the ground. Take the right foot, place it over top. Remember, we're taking this as a process. So you can start to loosen the ankles, keeping those heels on the, on the ground though. You want to hold on to the chair. You can start to lean forward while you're holding on. And then if you like, you can let go of your hands if that's in your practice. And we're just going to hold the pose. Slowly come up, belly, chest, and then head. Roll those shoulders back. Hands to the seat. Take that right foot back and then the left. And shake it out, left to right. See how we're doing on time here. All right, so let's come up to standing so that we can um, do a few standing poses. Even if you don't necessarily want to do all the standing poses, you can maybe watch 
or just do your best to stand up behind the seat to get some stretch on your body, okay? So come up, squeeze that core, lift up, come up, standing into that mountain pose and come behind your seat or to the side. I'm gonna come to the side. All right, that's easier for you to see me, but you're welcome to stand behind the chair. All right, beautiful. And we're just gonna gauge ourselves. We're gonna lean our body weight over towards the right side and we're gonna kick up on the left leg. We kind of been kicking up all day. That's why I wanted to add it. Bring that hand up as well on the left side, soften that right knee, and then allow that foot to kick down in front like you're sweeping something. And then come back up, squeeze the core, squeeze the thighs, squeeze your glutes, and then come back down. You wanna have that glutes included because the glutes are really important in your body's health. Last one, we're just doing four on each side. And then gently laying that foot, the, right, the left foot right next to the right. All right, I'm gonna come on to my other side. We're gonna take our weight and we're gonna lean it over towards the left. Kick up on that right side, soften that left knee, and then bring that leg down, squeezing those glutes in that core for a nice little sweep. And only go where you can go. This isn't for you to follow me completely. It's like, are you feeling balanced? How does your body react to being on one leg? How much do you need to push your weight into the chair? You know, keep this in mind. So when you're doing any poses standing up, that you're aware of it. And how is your breath working with this? Are you anxious? Are you holding it? If so, come down a little bit. Don't overwork yourself, okay? There's ways to monitor things. All right, so let's come behind our chair completely. All right, we're gonna come into the first thing like I like to do like a little downward dog. So take the foot, take a step back, bring your hands to the top of the chair, resting your arms on top of that chair. All right, and then you can just start to walk out your dog. And I say that, wiggle your tail, bone, uh, take your heels, lift them up and down. Now, for those who wanna come into maybe a more advanced downward dog, you can bring your hands onto the top of the chair, the back right where you sit, if your chair is designed like that. Now, if it's not, you're not gonna probably be able to do this um, with the chair facing this way, you'd have to turn it around, okay? you can do something similar. All right, so those are the two options. I'm gonna just come to the one with the hand, um, the head on the chair. One more breath. All right, come back up to standing, belly, chest, and then head. And remember that belly, chest, and head, and then come back forward. We're gonna take our right hand, lift it. I mean, our left hand, lift it up. So wiggle your left hand. All right, we're gonna take our left leg and bring it back behind us and come straight into a warrior two, right? And we're gonna sit our knee down so that it's stacked, the right knee stacked on top of the right ankle. You're holding on to the chair with the right, um, with the right hands. You can bring your hand onto your thigh for right now. And you're able to see that the knee is stacked on the ankle. The foot is parallel um, so I'll, let me not say parallel, it's straight. It's facing the right way. So it's not crooked to the left. It's not crooked to the right in that way. It's straight ahead. So right leg is straight ahead. Foot is straight ahead. That's just how it is. All right. Now we can bring out that left arm behind us. The foot is at a 45 degree angle. That means it's not straight ahead to the left. What it means is that it has a little bit of a, um, has a little bit of a shift on its angle. And so you're able to press more into that left foot all the way down into the outer rim of that sole. And that will help you to bump up in your warrior two. Take your gaze and look over your right shoulder. Lean forward, bring that right shoulder down and then pull back, keeping the tips of the fingers on top of the chair. Take your left hand and bring it to the top of your thigh on your right side, I mean, on your left side, okay? Good job. This is our reverse warrior. If you wanna bring your hand up and you feel like you have the balance, you can actually bring your hand all the way up and look at your hand for that reverse warrior. Or you can just keep it on the chair. Mm -hmm. All right, we're gonna pivot back around and we're gonna spin, bringing both our 
Um, hands back onto the chair, and now we're back into warrior. We're in warrior one. All right, so bump that left hip forward, take that right hip back, warrior one. And now bring both feet together right behind the chair. Come back into the downward dog. You can walk it out or you can just come into a position where you feel like you're stretching again. Take a breath. Nothing else to do but to breathe. And then slowly come back up, belly, chest, and then head. Awesome. All right, now we're gonna take that right foot. You're gonna just step it back behind you, give that space that you need. Soften your left knee so that you end up bending it and you're in that lunge position on the left side. All right, you're, you're holding on to the chair. The knee is stacked on top of the ankle. This time, that left foot is straight ahead. Right foot is now at that 45 degree angle. All right, extend out the right hand behind you, warrior one, looking over your left shoulder. Squeeze the thighs, pressing your, this, um, to the outer rim of the sole of your right foot to help you bump up a little bit, pressing into your toes on the left side so that you even bump up higher. Keep yourself active. Lean forward that left shoulder, and then come back, dropping your right hand down the right thigh. Fingertips can either be tight, um, touching the top of the chair, or you can come up into reverse warrior without the assistance of the chair. So it's your choice. I'm supposed to be a peaceful warrior. We're gonna bump around and we're gonna come into warrior one where what we do is we take our body, we basically cartwheel our hips in a sense, we bump that left hip back, bring that right hip forward, and now we're square with the chair in front of us. We're holding on to the top of the chair, we're feeling the warrior inside of us. You wanna lift up your hands, you can. I'm just gonna keep them here for now. Breathe in and breathe out. And then bring that right foot up to meet the left. Great job. And let's do our last downward dog. All right, so if you wanna walk it out, you can. And then before we come out of that downward dog this time, we're actually gonna take another step back, but we're gonna keep the tops of our palms and our hands on top of the chair. We're gonna extend that back out into like a tabletop position, soften the knees and slowly and gradually press our hips out to the wall behind us while simultaneously pressing our hands into the chair, stretching out. You just don't wanna overstretch the shoulders. This is actually coming and elongating from the hip. So maybe you can even take the left hip to the right and then the, um, back and forth and kind of just wiggle them a little bit so that you know that you're using the lower part of your body to do this. You're stretching out those hamstrings. All your hands are doing is pressing into the chair. It's the lower part of the body pulling away. You're just like your hands are glued though. So it gives you that stretch and it pulls apart the spine. It decompresses the back. It's really great for the body. Slowly, we're gonna start to walk up, taking each step at a time, gently. So we're standing back in behind the chair in mountain pose. Don't fix your hair, don't adjust your body, just stand and breathe. If you wanna bring your hands up overhead, you can to just close it off, or you can just bring one hand up or none, it's okay. Last final breath, hands come back to the tops of the chair and then come forward, taking your time, be gentle with yourself, coming back into that seated position in the chair. Beautiful, good job, all right. And let's go in for a flow on each side and then come into Savasana. So arms rise, each up, reach up overhead, exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift, flat back. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, arms lift. Kick out that right foot. And then exhale it back down and bring those hands down by the side. Last one, arms rise, reach up overhead. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift, flat back. 
Exhale, forward fold, inhale, arms rise. Kick up that left foot, last one. Bring the foot back down to the ground. Drop those hands down by the side. Bring the hands onto the tops of the thighs or to the belly, however you like your hands to be. You can even drop them by your sides and get comfortable for Savasana. Inhale and exhale. Start to just feel the full length of your body. Notice how each part of your body is maybe much more um, activated in terms of sensation. Allow for your breath once again to come down to your feet. So you get this full body awareness. Give your arms permission to relax, your belly, your thighs. Relax your feet. Maybe your legs even start to fall apart from one another. You don't have to be rigid here. If you wanna rest your back on the back of the chair, you can. Drop the tongue away from the top of the mouth. And congratulate yourself on a job well done. You didn't have to come to class today, but you did. As you continue to take each in, take in each breath, just celebrate the fact of being here and that you chose to be here. And each pose that you made today was a choice. You either empowered yourself in one way or another. And that's something that's honorable and respectful. Continue to just rest in your savasana, knowing that you earned it and that you were enough in class today. And just breathe. When you're ready, you can begin to just feel your feet connect to the ground in a way that you're starting to prepare to come back and to reset for the rest of your day. Maybe bring with you a sense of gratitude or your newfound awareness. If you like to continue bringing that intention in for your day, you're welcome to do so but you're also welcome to leave this class right here in this chair, letting go of whatever it is that you choose to. When you're ready, you can bring your hands to heart center and open your eyes, gently allowing the light to come in. I thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you have a beautiful and blessed day and namaste. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rochelle.